Hi, I'm Carl Anderson at Ridgeview. When we measure molecular interactions, we have at least two molecules at play. One of them is often anchored to the surface, and I call that one the target. At Ridgeview, we often work with living cells, so the target can be a cell surface receptor. An alternative is to attach purified proteins to a sensor surface. The second molecule is kept in solution, and I call that one the ligand. The molecular interaction occurs when the ligand and the target are brought together. Let's look closer to what happens and how to characterize that interaction. In the beginning, the targets are all alone. When ligands approach, mainly one thing happens. Ligands bind to targets. After a while, the target surface becomes populated with ligands, and then the ligands start to dissociate. This is inevitable because molecular interactions are reversible processes. If we wait long enough, the number of new ligands binding to the targets is the same as the number of ligands dissociating from them. At this point, equilibrium has occurred. If we remove the ligand incubation solution and replace it with pure buffer, the only ligands left are those bound to the target. One by one, they will dissociate, and after a while, all the targets are unoccupied. From a measurement perspective, what will this process look like? If we follow the amount of bound ligand over time, the initial phase will be a rapid, more or less linear increase. This is when most of the targets are still unoccupied. After some time, the signal increase will slow down, because there are fewer available targets to bind to, and because the dissociation of bound ligand is starting to impact the net binding rate. At this point, it's good to change the balance by increasing the ligand concentration. This will induce another binding step, looking similar to the first one, unless the targets are already saturated by ligands. When approaching equilibrium, it makes sense to remove the incubation solution and look at the process during washout. Release of ligand appears as a downward trend in measured data. The affinity value is a common characteristic of molecular interaction. Affinity represents the strength of the interaction at equilibrium and can be measured using a range of different methods. In time-resolved assays, we rely on the simple equation where affinity is the dissociation rate constant divided by the association rate constant. To calculate affinity, we simply need to estimate these rate constants. As soon as we start to see curvature in the binding curve, it contains information about both association and dissociation rate constants. The washout measurement is important because it depends on the dissociation rate only. Most importantly, look for curvature. This is the most valuable portion of the curve. In the ideal case, there is visible curvature at low concentration. The curve shape changes when concentration increases, the interaction approaches equilibrium, and there is a visible dissociation. When you see all this, you most probably have good data. I have exemplified the time-resolved interaction measurement using ligand tracer data, but everything I have said is general and applicable to other time-resolved methods. The approaches may differ a bit. With ligand tracer, we use few and low concentrations of ligand in sequence during long time. At low concentration, it simply takes time to see curvature. The typical SPR experiment instead uses several high concentration, each during short times. The curvature in a binding curve contains a tremendous amount of information, far beyond affinity determinations. For instance, time to equilibrium can be estimated. Look at this example. EGFR is a receptor relevant in cancer. The natural ligand, EGF, binds to this receptor, and so does the antibody cetuximab. The cancer cell line A431 is known to express EGFR. In fact, EGFR overexpression is reasonably common in some cancers. Let's now follow three nanomolar concentration of cetuximab or EGF when binding to the receptor. For cetuximab, it takes more than four hours to approach equilibrium when binding to EGFR. But EGF equilibrates in about one hour at the same concentration. Increasing the concentration would reduce the time to equilibrium. Curvature can also reveal if multiple interaction processes are taking place at the same time, and to see that we look for multiphasic curvature. Cetuximab looks like a monophasic regular interaction, but EGF interacts in a multiphasic manner to EGFR on A431 cells, so here the mechanism is more complex. 
Estimating the interaction characteristics from binding curves is probably the most accurate method available. Now, what I have said is just a glimpse of what you can learn from time-resolved interaction analysis. Why don't try this yourself to learn more about your proteins?